John. Hello, Andrew. You there, mate? Good day, Tony. How are you? Oh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, really well. Thanks. Thanks for doing this for us. Not a problem. Andrew Dimitri, can you believe it's been 10 years since that moment? Almost seems like yesterday, Tony. I can't. People keep reminding me about it, so uh, I can't believe it's 10 years. It's quite amazing, isn't it? I mean, for, for your tenure at the AFL and for everything that came across your desk and all the big stories that transpired, I reckon in years to come, if not already, this is the one that you're going to be remembered for, the man that brought meatloaf to the MCG. Well, it's funny. People used to say, uh, look, the grand final entertainment doesn't really matter. Why don't you just have a grand final without entertainment? Just bring the two teams out. But... I mean, the most Twitter feeds and Instagrams and Snapchat going around was always the grand final entertainment straight after it had finished. I mean, people do take notice of it and they certainly took notice of Meatloaf, I can tell you. So at what point of the season did you start getting an idea as to, okay, who, who can we get? Who do we want? So, like, how does that transpire? When, how early do you start that conversation? Look, the origins of Meatloaf go back to the year before because the year before we had a draw in the grand final, St Kilda Collingwood. And we had to reconvene following the game and get logistics going for the following week, the replay. So we organised a meeting the following morning and the great late Michael Godinski uh, was contacted about what are we going to do about grand final entertainment for the following week? And he said, look, at short notice, I think I can get Lionel Richie down from Hong Kong. He's, he's performing. And given my age, I was the only one on the management team that had ever heard of Lionel Richie. And everyone said, no, no, who's Lionel Richie? And I said, oh, come on, the Commodores, you know, uh, Everyone knows Lionel Richie dancing on the ceiling. So I used my eight and nine votes and exercised my right to <laughs> choose him. And he was a hit. So the following year, we uh, normally started again with Michael, probably about June, July, looking at various entertainment and all sorts of names cropped up, you know, Kylie Minogue, Bruce Springsteen, Rolling Stones, all very expensive. And then Meatloaf's name appeared and no one had really heard of Meatloaf except for me. I mean, I grew up with Bad Out of Hell and, I thought I'm on a bit of a roll here. Uh, after last year, Lionel Richie, I'm going to go again. So I, again, used my uh, ultimate uh, voting power and went for Meatloaf. And um, he was chosen and uh, that was probably one of the worst decisions ever made. Do you really think it was one of the worst decisions you ever made? Well, look, I hadn't realised when we appointed Meatloaf uh, and contracted him for the thing that he'd had a heart attack uh, yes. a few weeks before the... Um, uh, he came down to the MCG. I mean, he had a cardiac arrest. He was performing somewhere. And they, he collapsed and he carried off stage. I think given he had a heart attack and the fact that he lost his voice and he wasn't singing at his normal range, it would have probably been preferable if we had have um, cancelled him. Um, but we weren't to know the full extent of his illness. Um, he certainly wasn't forthcoming. Um, and he came. But um, it would have been good to know how bad he was. <laughs> Because I, that was put to him at the media conference, I recall, when you were sitting alongside him in one of the rooms at the MCG and his health concerns did come up and this was his response. The only time the 64-year-old bristled was when asked about those recent collapses on stage from asthma attacks. Oh, go away from me. That's my, that, you, again, it, 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 listen. Well, I, was, uh, I can tell you, I was, I was giving him a lot of man love and a lot of hugs at that press conference. Uh, so I certainly wasn't aware of how ill he'd been. But uh, no, he, he seemed to be up for it. Um, he uh, was raring to go. Uh, I told him he was one of my idols when I was growing up, uh, particularly with that album, Bad Out of Hell. Everyone knew every word to every song. It was a big hit, big hit, that album. Um, but on the day, it just didn't happen. At what stage... Were you sitting there thinking to yourself, this has turned to shit? <laughs> well, Tony, there's a bit of a backstory to that because that day was raining. If you remember the grand final that day, it had been raining badly. And we were sitting in the Olympic room having our pre-match function, which were all the dignitaries are there and Prime Minister and the Governor General and every CEO of every major corporation in Australia, all the police. And I had a phone call saying, well, we've got a bit of an issue. Meatloaf won't perform. He's got stage fright because of the, the rain. He's worried about the electrical issues and the currents. And I said, what are you talking about? We, he can't. We've got, we're, we're geared up with television. We're queued to go up at a certain time. What do you mean he can't sing? He, 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 he's got to go. He's got to go. So anyway, there's a lot of 
activity going, a flurry of activity, and they finally talked him into performing. It's probably one again one of the worst decisions we ever made getting him to sing. Uh, <laughs> it would have probably been better if he'd pulled out. But I, look, I think to be honest, we all got out of our, our out of the Olympic room and went and sat at our seats, and we got up. And when Midlow came out, there was a bit of an air of excitement, and it only it only took about oh two bars, I reckon, to work out that he was in trouble. Um, he just wasn't on on song, and he was screeching and. Um, you know, my children still still watch those YouTube videos of him singing. I think the dog in the background there actually has hit more notes in the past 15 seconds than Meatloaf did in that 12-minute medley. So how, how real was the threat when you got the phone call saying he's not going on, he's got stage fright? I think it was, I think it was pretty real. Um, it was pretty real. He, he, he it was described to me as some sort of mini panic attack. Uh, it was wet. It cleared up by the time he came out to sing. Um, but I think at one stage there, it was doubtful whether he was going to perform. And what was the backup plan? Was there one? Look, anyone would have been better than me. Like, I could have sung, to be honest, Tony. I would have gone up there and, and performed better than he did that day. But um, no, I don't know if there was a contingency. I don't think there really was a contingency plan. That he had to sing. I mean, you know, as you know, in television, there are lots of things queued and... The, you know, the, you know, the run sheets there for weeks in a grand final, the logistics and the run sheet are organised weeks in advance, you know, the queuing when the teams come out, the photograph and everything, the half-time entertainment, the getting the dignitaries up to the room. But there wasn't any alternative for him to sing. Um, we just didn't know he was going to be so bad. So at what point did you realise the fallout was going to be as great as it was? Oh, that's easy. I was getting text messages from people I knew uh, in my seat, probably about one and a half minutes into the performance. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they were hilarious, actually. They were, they were saying, is this real? Is there something wrong with the sound system? Has someone killed a cat? Um, you know, just, people I knew, just friends of mine, were just sending me texts. And then um, people around me were saying, is this, is it must be something wrong with the sound system of the MCG. And we were, we were looking for any excuse, but it, it wasn't to be, it just wasn't. I mean, his backup singers were pretty good. They, oh. they, they, they covered for him a bit. Absolutely, and the band. So were you, like, initially angry? Or, I mean, what, I mean, you can laugh about it now, 10 years on, and, I mean, probably only a few years on, you were still laughing about it. But were you angry initially that it was so bad? And did you realise, I, I was the one pushing this. I was almost the fanboy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear this. I wasn't angry. To be honest, we were in a bit of shock. Um, and I, I'll never forget the conversation I had with, with Michael, uh, Michael Gadinsky. He came up to me and he apologised and said, don't know what's going on. He, was, he felt bad because it, he was his recommendation. And we always went with Michael's recommendation. And I told him, don't worry about it. These things happen. It's just a bad day. I wasn't, I wasn't angry. I was just disappointed. And as the day went on and the 24-hour news cycle started and the sort of game had been pushed into the background, yeah. uh, it was more about meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a kerfuffle. He insulted us and we insulted him back and he apologised. And then there was issues around his fee and how much did he get paid and so forth. But look, it is, it is what it is. It goes down in folklore. It's up there with Angry Anderson and the, uh, the Batmobile. <laughs> Maybe even better, Tony. Uh, probably better. You've, you've led with your chin there, Andrew, because you mentioned his fee. Uh, the conjecture at the time was about 700000 Look, I can't disclose that. It'll probably be in one of my books, Tony, coming out. But let's just say it was north of 500. Right. Did you ever ask for any of that? Not, dollar, not dollars, unfortunately. Not. Oh, right. Okay, right. I'm with you now. So, okay. Hardly money well spent. Have you ever listened to a Meatloaf song since? Look, I have. Um, I mean, I like Meatloaf. And he had some great songs. And, you know, songs written by Jim Steinman, who's had written other people's songs and been very successful. I had course a few weeks after the grand final to be watching the arts channel on Foxtel and there was a meatloaf concert in Canada. And um, I said to my wife, look, you know, meatloaf's on in this concert. And uh, it was in Toronto or somewhere. And I started watching it and he was just as bad. It, had, it was recorded about a year earlier. And I said, I wish they had to put this on a year ago. I mean, I, <laughs> we could have known something. So I, think, I think his voice had started to go probably before the grand final. Well, this is quite amazing. I reckon I've seen that same doco. Is that where Dennis Quaid, the actor, is uh, backstage and Meatloaf collapses after, and they just all walk around him? 
Yeah, they do. They do. And um, uh, well, he might have collapsed more than once, Tony, for all we know. I mean, he, might have, he, he was sort of slightly overweight and let, then went through a big weight loss at one stage. Yeah. Um, he was very opinionated. I remember he was very opinionated. He had all sorts of, uh, he had all sorts of um, opinions on politics. He knew a lot about Australia. Um, to be fair to say he was probably more to, to the right of politics. Um, but he wasn't apologetic about his performance. I can tell you that much. He, um, he thought he gave his all. Uh, just a couple more. There was n never any correspondence between you and Meatloaf after that? No, no, I, well, I, I'd be fair to say no, there wasn't. But I, I, I bear no ill feeling towards Meatloaf. Uh, still plays songs and still like his music. Um, but let's just say he might be slightly past the tunny like we all are. <laughs> exactly. And uh, just one final one. Was there one artist you desperately wanted during your days as CEO that you just didn't land? Look, the one we wanted always was Bruce Springsteen uh, and Michael wanted Bruce Springsteen and obviously brought Bruce Springsteen out um, for concerts after the grand We just couldn't get the timing right. It was hard to get, we had to coincide and try and correlate when an act would be in Australia and get them not just to come for the grand final, but they might be doing a tour and you could promote it off the back of it. We just couldn't land Bruce Springsteen at the time we wanted. We would have probably moved heaven and earth to get him. He would have rocked the G, I would imagine. Uh, but we've had some great acts. You know, I can remember Powderfinger blew the MCG away. Um, and and, uh, and we've had others. But, um, we've, you know, the one that certainly blew the MCG away for the wrong reason was Meatloaf. He tops the charts. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Andrew, great to catch up and great to uh, reflect on 10 years ago, that moment. Thanks, Tony. Well, my pleasure.